Hi, I'm Amy McLean, and I'm going to be analyzing the fear of snakes by Wona Crozer. The snake can separate itself from its shadow. Move on, ribbons of light. Taste the air. The morning and the evening. The darkness at the heart of things. I remember when my fear of snakes left for good. It fell behind me like an old skin. In swift current, the boys found a huge snake and chased me. Down the alleys, Larry Morin carrying it like a green torch, and the others yelling, drop it down in ba her back. My terror of it sliding in the runnel of my spine. Larry was the one who, Larry the one who touched the inside of my legs on the swing. An older boy we knew we shouldn't get too close to with our little dresses, our soft skin. My brother saying, let her go, and I crouched behind the caragonus, uh, watched watched Larry nail the snake to the telephone pole. It twisted on the twin points of the light, unable to crawl out of its pain, its mouth opening, its red tongue tasting its own terror. I loved it then, that snake. The boys standing there with their stupid hands dangling it from their waists, the beautiful green mouth opening, a terrible dark O oh, no one could hear. So to start off by the first sentence, the snake can separate itself. Uh, the use of S in snake and separate and its self is an example of semblance. It um, also contributes to the theme of like the snake. With a like, snake um, being an example of nature and like um, being sly. Uh, snakes are often found as such evil thing, evil creatures, or they are like the image of evil. Um, with the the sound of the S, it also uses, it also uh, is used to create a sort of image of the snake, because that is the sound that snakes do make. It, it's translated to like a big S sound. Um, from its shadow, moved on ribbons of light. Move on, Ribbons of Light is an example of uh, figurative imagery. Um, also, the Ribbons of Light is uh, personified because it moves on, it tastes the air. Um, it's also an example of imagery because tastes the air is makes the reader think of, makes the reader feel um, this kind of emotion. The Morning and the Evening. Uh, those are two contrasting um, ideas, morning and evening, like before and after. Like they, it makes the poem um, have this kind of like uh, tone, not tone, but um, flow. Like it's happening every day and every night. Um, the darkness at the heart of things. Uh, darkness at the height of things is an example of um, darkness. Uh, darkness is also uh, yeah, an, an ex uh, contracting to the ribbons of light because darkness and light are obviously two opposite polar opposite um, things um, okay I remember when my fear of snakes left for good. Um, I remember and uh, is an example of um, memory and left for good. It's also a metaphor for maybe something, not exactly the snake, but maybe something in her past that she's reminiscing on. It fell behind me like an old skin. And yeah, uh, an old skin is, skin is a metaphor. Just like uh, snakes, they do like shed their skins. I think she's comparing herself to a snake in this way. Um, for, like maybe she is trying to, or the character in this poem is saying that um, she is trying to let go of things in the past. Uh, in Swift Current, uh, these two um, words, they're both capital, which uh, gives import shows importance to them. Uh, the boys, the boys found a huge snake and chased me. 
um, this is a reflective statement. It, um, voice kind of huge snake and chased me. Uh, I think this, this is kind of her fear. Oh, since her, that she is afraid of the snakes, and she's realizing that the boys in the story, they're not exactly, um, innocent anymore. They're very rough and masculine and chasing and this kind of, uh, that kind of thing. Also, the boys is plural, which kind of shows that it's maybe more than one boy. Um, chase me down the alleys. Larry Moen, carrying out the, gr like, a, carrying it like a green torch. Um, the use of the word Larry Moen, uh, shows importance because if this is a, a story, like, of coming of age and of the past, her remembering the name is very significant because, I mean, if she's remembering someone from her childhood, then they would have had to have a big role in her life. Um, uh, carrying it like a green torch. The green torch is obviously a use of imagery because it's describing it and it's making you think of it. Uh, others yelling. The others yelling, drop it down her back. Uh, the use of the others yelling also shows that these are many boys and not just one. They're, um, this is also very, when you think of uh, others yelling, drop it down her back, it's a very, um, it's a very uh, aggressive chant. It's almost like they're chanting or they're, they're there's many of them, so it's maybe a crowd. Um, my terror uh, of it sliding in the runnel of my spine. So this is obviously very, a very, very big imagery uh, here. It's like telling, saying it's sliding down the back of my spine. There's also st still the use of semblance and with all the S's in the, within the poem. Uh, it, the, uh, the use of semblance is, kind of, is creating a... Um, it's like speeding up the track of the poem. It's making it flow better. Um, Larry, the one who touched the inside of my legs on the swing. Uh, this is um, obviously very, very, like, uh, very, very, like, heavy in imagery. Um, touch the inside of my legs is kind of showing, like, maybe the theme of the poem. The, this is maybe the part of the central tension of the poem. Um, touch the legs on the swing. I think this is maybe showing the coming of age part of the story because since um, she, it, you can tell from this um, poem that the character is a little girl because they are talking about... Um, they're talking in a way that it's uh, children, so maybe the author is saying, um, is having coming over, com realizing that maybe boys are not just playful and they are uh, maybe can be dangerous in a way. Uh, an older boy we knew we shouldn't get close to with our little dresses. The use of little dresses here is showing is saying um, that they are little. Uh, children um an older boy which is obviously saying um that maybe they are a bit um intimidated by this boy because they knew they shouldn't be around him or they knew they shouldn't get close to him um my brother saying let her go let her go is a, um an example of uh astronauts. um it, it also is uh italicized, which is showing importance to it, which is like drawing the reader to it. I crouched behind the Karenis. The Karenis is a, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it is a, a type of bush, like a shrub, and her hiding behind it is um, showing that she has fear and that she is trying to like get away from them. Uh, I watched Larry nail the snake to the telephone pole. Um, nail, uh, Nail um, is a very descriptive word that is showing, is very violent as well. When you think about nailing the snake, it also has a biblical um, 
connection to it because um, of Jesus Christ and them nailing him to the stake. This is like the same thing. They're nailing a snake to a telephone pole, um, which is important in Lorna Kirsch's poems because she does speak of um, nature as like her divine. And she does have a lot of biblical um, analogies in her poems, which is, shows that they are important to her. Um, Twisted on a plot of light, unable to crawl, out of its pain, its mouth opening, its red tongue tasting its own terror. I loved it then, that snake. The boy standing there with their stupid hands, dangling from their waist, their beautiful green mouth opening. A terrible O, no one could hear. Uh, o is also a sound of a snake. Think of like a snake's mouth opening. Um, the beautiful is also like a very contrasting um, statement to say because they breathe. Um, there, most people don't see snakes as being beautiful, but uh, this person is. This whole pa the whole passage from out of its pain to no one could hear is uh, heavily in image imagery. Um, it also is like an appre appreciative or like a reflective tone, where the first part of the poem is kind of reflective, and then the middle of the poem is um, is kind of like graphic, intimate, and intense. Um, the, I think the, the point of the poem was to show that, was for Lorna Corsia to compare herself, or not say, okay, I don't think she's really saying she's scared of snakes, I think she's comparing snakes to boys, as she's scared of the boys, but she's describing snakes as a beautiful creature, and that even though, um, it is small and it is, um, people don't really like touching it or going around it, it is powerful and it is to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you.